We have derived the current control voltage source using a MOS transistor and also analyzed it thoroughly in the small signal domain. Now, we need to find a suitable bias circuit for it and complete the picture. Okay. The small signal picture of the current controlled voltage source is this. I I and R S and this is connected between the gate and source of the MOS transistor. We have V G S, we have the load R L and the resistance which realizes the trans resistance is R M connected between drain and gate. Now, the source is grounded here. Okay, so, it is more convenient to pick a biasing technique where the source is already grounded. Okay. Now, if you leave aside two of the biasing schemes which require an op amp, uh, we have either drain feedback which looks like this or source feedback which looks like that. Okay. Clearly, the drain feedback configuration appears very suitable for this. First of all, the source terminal is connected to ground. Now, we have a resistance R m between drain and gate. When we came up with the biasing technique, we had no specific requirement. So, we just connected the drain directly to the source, but it does not have to be like this. We can always insert a resistor in this branch and nothing will happen because the gate current is 0 and the biasing will not be disturbed at all. Okay. So, this is suitable for this and actually the resulting topology looks very similar to the common source amplifier with drain feedback bias. So, we will use this biasing technique. The only thing we have to change is that between drain and gate, we cannot make a direct connection. We have to connect a resistor R m. That is all that is there to it. Okay. So, we have the supply voltage and a current source I naught. Okay. And we connect this resistance R m like that. And as usual, The input source is AC coupled through a capacitor C 1 and the load is AC coupled through a capacitor C 2. Okay. So, this is the complete picture of a current controlled voltage source and it looks exactly like a common source amplifier with drain feedback bias except here we show a current source in parallel with a resistance because it is a current controlled voltage source. As long as this resistance is there, you can also equivalently show it as a voltage source in series with a resistance. Okay. So, it is exactly the same circuit. The only difference between this and the common source amplifier with drain feedback bias is in the value of R m okay, and the constraints. In uh, case of uh, common source amplifier using drain feedback, the value of R m is made very large, whereas now it is not so large. Okay. So, this circuit is very simple and I do not think I need to discuss this any further. You can evaluate the operating point of this. You can write the small signal picture assuming C 1 and C 2 are shorts and find the gain. We have actually already done that. Now, the only thing remaining is to figure out values of C 1 and C 2 such that they do behave like short circuits. Okay? And for that, it is very easy. I am not going to go through all the steps, but you have to realize that The resistance looking that way between this point and ground is nothing but the input resistance that we have already evaluated. Okay, We know that this is R L plus R M divided by 1 plus G M R L and of course, in this it is implied that C 2 is chosen correctly, so that it behaves like a short circuit. And similarly, the resistance that looks back this way is R out 
and we know that it is R s plus R m divided by 1 plus G m R l. Okay. So, what is the condition for C 1? You can see that if you deactivate the circuit across C 1, you will see R s plus R n. Okay. Inside the circuit, we have R n and C 1 is connected here, R s is connected there to ground and this is ground. So, across C 1, you have R s plus R n. So, the reactance of uh, the capacitor C 1 must be much smaller than the resistance that is across it or C 1 must be much more than 1 over omega, where omega is the signal frequency times R s plus R n. Okay. And similarly, across C 2, you see R l and you see the output resistance of the circuit, which is R out. So, C 2 must be much greater than 1 over the signal frequency omega times R out plus R l. Okay. So, you see R l on this side and you see R out on this side. So, C 2 must be much more than that one. Okay. Now, we can also realize this current control voltage source using source feedback bias. Okay. Again, the signal picture of the current controlled current source is this. Okay. And if you use source feedback technique for biasing, we will have I naught, we have the supply voltage and we have some fixed voltage V g 0. Okay. This is not the most convenient bias circuit for the current control voltage source, but just to see how it is done, we can do that. Okay. First of all, the drain here is not connected to small signal ground, whereas here the drain is connected to VDD, so which means it is the small signal ground. Okay, so that is one problem, and then, but we have dealt with uh, that kind of situation before, and then here the source is not at ground, whereas here the source is at ground, so that has to be fixed as well. Okay, so let's do all of that. First of all, this VG zero has to be derived from the supply, so we use our usual resistive divider to do that. Okay. And then the input has to be connected to the gate without disturbing the bias. So, as usual, we use AC coupling. We cannot connect the drain directly to the supply voltage, because that will short the drain to ground in the small signal picture. So, we have to connect it through a bias resistor R d as usual and also the load resistance has to be A c coupled to the drain node. Okay. So, let me call this C 2. Then finally, we have to have a resistance between gate and uh, drain in the incremental picture. Again, of course, everywhere we have assumed that the input signal is at some frequency greater than 0, that is it is not a DC input. So, we have to connect it between drain and gate, but we should not connect it directly, because that would disturb the bias that will actually introduce drain feedback. So, we AC couple that as well, we connect a capacitance in series, but the idea is that this capacitance behaves like a short at signal frequencies. So, for signal frequencies, it is as though only R m is connected between drain and gate. So, this is R m. Okay. 
And finally, the source terminal has to be grounded and we know how to do that. We have used it for common source amplifiers. We can connect a capacitor to ground. Okay. So, we have four capacitors, but that is okay. So, this is just to show that you can use the source feedback bias also for the current controlled voltage source. Okay. So, let me draw this a little more neatly. This is the input source, it is AC coupled to the gate of the transistor. From the source, we have a current source I naught, which is bypassed to ground using another capacitor. We have the drain bias resistor R D and resistance R L. This is the supply voltage V D D. Finally, we have the resistor that realizes the trans resistance R m in series with a capacitor. So, C 1, C 2, C 3 and C 4. C 1 and C 2 we have already evaluated. C 3 is similar to what we needed for the common source amplifier. C 4 I would not do it now. You can take it as an exercise and do it yourselves. There are two extra components here. We have R 1 and R 2 from the gate to ground. Okay. So, that is we have R 1 parallel R 2 between the gate and ground. First of all, by choosing R 1 and R 2 to be very large, much larger than R s, you can completely neglect the effect of it, because if R 1 and R 2 are much larger than R s, the effective resistance between gate and ground will still be R s. Okay. Now, if that is not possible, then wherever you had R s before in your expression, you have to change it to R 1 parallel R 2 parallel R s. Okay. Also, we have this drain bias resistor R D. So, that introduces an additional resistance from drain to ground. So, wherever we had R L before, it has to be replaced by R L parallel R D in our analysis. Now, in practice, it is not difficult to make R 1 and R 2 very large, so that they can be neglected. Whereas, it is not quite possible to make R D very large, because in that case, the voltage drop across this becomes very large and you have to use a very large supply voltage. Okay. So, this will affect the circuit to some extent, but because it is a current control voltage source, the output voltage should not depend so much on the load resistance. So, it will be affected, but not by much, as long as the transconductance G M is very large. Okay. So, this is a current control voltage source with source feedback biasing. Okay. So, that completes the picture of the current control voltage source and we have also illustrated that we can combine it with the two biasing techniques drain feedback and source feedback. Okay.